Good afternoon, Skate Kitties. Old Skate Geezer here for my first skate video in many, many months because it hasn't been in vogue in this particular area. It's been summertime and the, the skate vibe hasn't been really uh, strong. But I was reading through the comments on some of my old old YouTube videos and it seems quite a few young people uh, despite my limited ability not to be able to ollie and do other new school tricks they have a a small amount of respect for my knowledge and understanding but above all my collection of vintage skateboards so instead of trying to demonstrate how to surf carve or do some of these other old school things I thought that uh, I'll speed up my language here so that we can make this short uh, I'm going to show you some of my boards because I do uh, build quite a few custom boards and I've come to understand that eBay is not the greatest venue for trying to sell custom shaped skate gear uh, people tend to buy what they're familiar with which is something that is either vintage or branded with a, a name that they can identify with and also the aesthetics of old school skates from the 70s 80s and 90s has changed pretty drastically uh, to the new school where the boards are pretty much nothing like the, the old school boards that we used to skate on back then. Uh, and I understand that I'm not involved with the, with the aesthetic of new school skating. So using uh, these little teeny, say 56 millimeter wheels on a popsicle stick, you know, with a basic indie truck with uh, no front or rear is not that appealing to me because what's appealing about the aesthetic of old school skating was the architecture, uh, design, and artistry of the board. Crafting the board, the idea behind the board, and that it was uh, made in a likeness to the surfing sport rather than snowboarding, which basically, I guess if you wanted to describe it, really is a switch sport so that you really don't have a front and back of the board. You skate either well switch or uh, faking. Like Larry Bertelman may, I don't know if he was the first surfer, but uh, they learned to skate switch so that you can flip back and forth and you can ride the wave the way that you need to by whether you're facing the wave wall or whether you're facing out. I think that has affected uh, the aesthetic of skating somewhat so that now that we just have basically a uh, popsicle stick that doesn't have a front or a back and that's fine and I also understand that the ollie tricks that uh, the youthful generation does needs that big tail or kick on the front to do the tricks and so that's all good but uh, that's not where I'm coming from but I'm gonna amuse you a little bit First of all, with a, a custom design that I made, this basically is a Powell new, new School board, uh, and I bought it because I wanted one New School style board. And this one, um, I, I don't remember where I bought it. It may have been here in Fayetteville, but the Powell was purported to be the board that had the record of the highest ollie. So that meant to me that the wood was the correct choice and the density and the flexibility and the tactile characteristics gave you enough spring and strength to, to be able to do these tricks. And that does not relate to me because I don't ollie. But I did want a, a new school board. And then I did basically with not a huge amount of thought customize that Powell board to make it a little bit more interesting. So this board with my graphic turned out to be what my brother-in-law calls the penis board, or rather I call it the woman board. 
and it looks like this. So here on the front, we started with a regular Powell um, new school board, and I think the tail pretty much was the shape of the Powell, right? And it was symmetric so that the front, the top was the same shape as the bottom, which to me is, that's not the surf aesthetic. So the first thing I do is uh, make a nose and a tail of the board by shape. And then I wanted this board to represent the female gender, gender somehow in what can be kind of a, not necessarily predominantly masculine, but uh, sometimes skate rat oriented sport where that you could have some uh, femininity. So um, from the pinup days, I turned this into a woman. So this is her head, this is her bangs, these are her breasts. This is her pubic hair, this is her abdomen, her belly, her belly button, and this is her butthole, which is a black widow spider, but really is uh, the anus, and these are the butt cheeks. So this is in humor. Please take this as humor. Uh, not too many people would uh, have a penis board. Anyway, this is my one, only one new school board because it's set up uh, as such with the little... 56 millimeter. These are baby bones. So these were probably a very early, earlier than the wheels that we have now commercially available. Uh, bones have, have been around from the beginning. So this may have been a pattern for the new school wheels to come later. So these are baby bones. They're vintage. And these are Venture Low Trucks that I tried to sell that nobody was interested in. But they have a beautiful, beautiful aesthetic. They're uh, the way that they're, they're lows, they're aluminum, the base plate, plate is carved in a very nice geometric fashion. They're very well styled. They look good. I have bones, reds, dodos in there, bushings, and they turn and they carve. So that, with no riser pads, is my one and only new school board. And it, basically this is a humorous thing. So I hope nobody steals my design. Because if you do, it, it, it came from me first. So that's to, to start things off. Uh, second, this is the stick that I ride. This is a Gordon and Smith Bull Rider reissue. And I think that these came out in a run around 2002, 2003, before Gordon and Smith, I think, uh, have gone out of business. It was Larry Gordon's daughter, I think, that took over the company in California. And they stayed in business for quite a long time. But um, we started with Gordon and Smith Fiber Flexes back in the late 1970s. So to have any kind of a reissue that's a, a laminate fiberglass and maple is a great thing. The first one that I bought whenever I got back into skating again, maybe not quite 10 years ago, I wanted to, to buy and put together a board that closely resembled my old GNS uh, Fiber Flex from 1978. And at that time, there was a great uh, skate site on the internet called Solid Skate in California, and he had longboard parts. And the GNS Bull Rider and Team Rider reissues were in stock at that time. So I purchased a GNS Team Rider reissue. Uh, it's um, th it's basically this. So this has got Bowtough fiberglass on the top and on the bottom. Which, if you don't know, bow tough fibergraph bow tough is because they use for archery bows. It's extremely strong, and I think this is beautiful because it's black. It's laminated with one, two, three, four, five plies of maple, bow tough on the top and bottom, um, which makes it pretty darn rigid. It doesn't flex a whole lot. When I bought mine, maybe five, six years ago, it was not this shape. This is more the, the bow rider shape. So when the team rider reissue first came out, it was a little bit bigger than this, and it didn't have a, a great shape. So what I did, uh, the trucks, I put on Tracker RTS uh, trucks, which was a good choice, and I bought back then, because the retro zigzags had not come out yet, I bought uh, Road Rider reissues 
but they weren't the same aesthetic as the Road Rider 6s, which were a slalom profile. But that was the only thing that was available at that time, I guess, from Santa Cruz, were the Road Rider issues. And the urethane was okay, but they were 78A, which is pretty soft. And that, I found out later, is quite a bit softer than the original durometer of the Road Rider 4, 2, and 6, which is more like about 84A, which is a harder wheel. But anyway, it was it's a process like anything. Skating in the collection that I have of over a hundred vintage skateboards is an evolving process that you don't get the nugget of information that you want all the time. Sometimes it takes a couple of years for you to see a particular trend and get a board together the way that it should be and that's the fun thing about it. So anyway, I took the original Team Rider which was bigger than this and I basically took a, a GNS Warp Tail Stacy Peralta reissue which was a solid wood laminate board, right? The warp tail, you're probably familiar with that. It came out in several different um, styles. When it originally came out, it was solid oak, and then it came out later as a laminate. But the shape was, was pretty nice and pretty surfy. So I just basically took that warp tail, laid that on my Team Rider, uh, stenciled it out, and I cut the Team Rider down to the shape of the warp tail, and it ended up coming out a little bit longer because the Team Rider was longer than the, the Warp Tail for me ended up being a little bit too short. But that was how I custom made my very first stick that I rode and I got and I learned how to ride a little bit of vert for the first time in my life. I used that. Man, it was my pride and joy. It had Tracker, uh, I think they were 116 millimeter RTS trucks on the front and back. And eventually what I came to find was the wheel that I really prefer, which is the ABEC 11 Retro Zigzag, which is a great wheel that you can get in many different durometers, lemon, lime, orange, but it really uh, is very much the slalom profile, the shape of the original Road Rider 6. Uh, I've got it in 86 durometer, 83. I actually have it in a 70 millimeter, uh, 78A durometer, but this is a fantastic wheel. So anyway, this is the stick that I ride now because the one that I just told you about that I bought, I mean that I made from the Team Rider, got lost on the plane as I flew from Sydney, Australia to Los Angeles. I missed the plane, they loaded my stuff on the plane, they had to go on the plane, pull my luggage off because I didn't make the plane and the board got lost. And that was kind of a big blow. So I've spent uh, several years trying to reassemble that board and it was only recently that this Team Rider popped up on eBay uh, the, and it actually is a refined shape so this really is very similar to the board that I learned to skate on again so hence this is very valuable to me uh, it's rare that these pop up uh, so I, I, I'm going to keep this I'm not going to set it up because in the meantime quite a few of the bowl rider reissues also surfaced on eBay from that limited run in 2002-2003 and you can see they're similar in shape but the bowl rider is a little bit thinner uh, a little bit thinner a little bit more cigar shaped and the difference the main difference being it's only three laminations of maple with bow tough fiberglass glass on the top and the bottom so that makes the team rider more flexible so these started to pop up Instead of the Team Rider, which is what I had, which was a very stiff board, I had rails on it too, but I got used to it and I just wanted to have the same thing that I'd had. But three uh, Team uh, Ball Riders popped up on eBay and I purchased all three of them. And I customized the shape. This is a customized shape. As you can see, the nose is uh, is not rounded off. I, I pointed it. I made it a little sharper um, because the... It's functional for doing nose tricks, very much like... I never understood why the Logan Earth Ski was a popular shaped board. With that narrow front end, it's because uh, the Logan boys, I don't know if it was Bruce or the other one, Brad, had the uh, nose wheelie record of anyone. And most probably because of that very pointed nose that would uh, put your feet in the right place to be able to control the board when you do a, do a nose wheelie. Anyway, I didn't really think a whole lot about this. I just wanted something similar to the shape that I had before. I may have thinned this down a little bit myself. I can't remember if I cut it. But the first thing that I always do with a belt sander, if you're into the surf tradition, is to bevel the edges. 
So many, many of the, of the new boards that you buy today are cut out commercially and they don't take the time to bevel these. So I take a, a belt sander and I smooth the, the, the rail so that if you were to ride this barefoot, this is going to be pleasant to your feet. It's not going to be a sharp perpendicular 90 degree edge between the top and the side of the board. You want this to be curved and very um, smooth. Uh, very much like a surfboard and the tail I didn't have a whole lot of um, thought I just kind of made a shape there that was pleasing to me I had to strip the grip deck off the top of it because it comes with the grip from GNS and man that's a chore because it's really put on there good I don't think it's sandpaper I think it's rubber but I had to do a go to a lot of trouble to get the grip off the top uh, but it leaves this nice turquoise color you know that was the stain color of the board uh, I put my own transparent grip tape on the top, which I like that vintage look. I put some rails on it, and here again, these are RTS um, 116 millimeter. That's slalom. RTS is for slalom. RTX is for the looser turning truck. And these are uh, 66 millimeter 86A retro zigzags, and that's what I ride. You can see that I, I uh, lengthened my nose a little bit, so I filled in the holes with epoxy resin. Uh, and I also shortened the tail just a little bit too because it tended to want to be too quick whenever you would do a 360. So anyway, as I said before, I'm not going to demonstrate anything, but this is really a great all-around board that uh, it has a little bit of flex in it. Uh, it's very stylish. It's very quick. Uh, so this is basically my main board. Uh, it's a good one. All these years I've been wanting to uh, expand into the longboard uh, aesthetic a little bit. And I, and I have quite a few of these in my collection. I must have probably ten or maybe more longboards. But uh, it's interesting, you know, the whole nomenclature of what a longboard is. I, because I was a skater back in the late 70s, and I wasn't fantastic, but, but I was um, pretty good doing freestyle tricks. I could do a kick flip and nose wheelie and tail wheelie and Eskimo roll and walk the dog and I could ride a park you know and I had good balance and I know how to control the skateboard I know how to skate. So you have enough instinct you have enough balance to know that when you put your feet on a board whether it responds the way that you want it to respond which me as an old school skater I wanted to to carve. That's what this board does. Um, pretty well, you know, RTS or, or slalom trucks. So I can pump this board and I can turn pretty sharp. And that's, aesthetic is important to me that I kick turn and I can do that old school stuff. This uh, particular board, as you can see, is a Z-Flex 33. And I didn't know when I purchased it that it would become a board that I thought that I was going to ride in my arsenal or my quiver because it takes a long time to research the board and figure out what kind of components to put on it, which it took me a long time to do that with the Z-Flex. What was uh, stood out in my mind was 33 inches is about the right length for your beginning of a long board. If you don't want to jump up to 38, or you really have to spread your legs out and surf, uh, skate surf style, 33 is kind of in between where you don't have to change your stance that much, but you get a little more stability and a little bit more of the aesthetic of the longboarding. So this went through several different permutations of trucks and wheels until I got it set up the way that I wanted to. I bought Tracker Fast Track Reverse ping, Kingpin Trucks because I just like to have a good sampling of uh, currently available equipment in my uh, collection. So not to say that they were better than any others. I like the Tracker RTX and the RTS. I like Indies also, but I'm not a big big grinder, so I don't need to grind on the axles. So I like trucks that turn and are functional, and the Trackers have always done that. So I wanted to try these uh, reverse kingpin trucks. The problem was is that when I got them with the red bushings, which I have over here, oh yeah, it came with these red bushings, these are way too stiff. So the trucks wouldn't turn, and that would be fine if you're going to bomb a hill, if you're going to go downhill, the guys, like a steeper hanger. You can flip the hanger, right, so that you can carve or you can have a stable downhill truck. So that would have been great. You, uh, with the reverse uh, kingpin, you don't get speed wobbles. 
as you go down, your front truck doesn't tend to want to do this. So that's the whole point of having a reverse kingpin truck. But I got to be able to turn. So I was able to find the blue eliminator bushings, uh, which transform that truck into something that you can actually turn on now. And I've got these cranked down pretty tight because they turn really loose. The, their, the trackers fast track is a lot like the Bennett Pro. No, the Bennett Vector reissue. Which is, if you excuse me, but the Bennett Vector reissue uh, is that. And it's a very tall, steep truck. And the way that it carves is, it's not a smooth carve like the trackers. It's a really sharp turn. So if you clamp down and you put your weight on it, it's going to turn really, really sharp. And that's cool for slalom. Uh, but that's not so cool if you just like to make big long carves as you go down a hill. But anyway, the bushings made the difference on these, so now that you can actually carve on these trackers, and I assume that if I wanted to go downhill that they would be stable. But uh, I, I don't remember, I think they may be 150 millimeter uh, axle width. I got a half inch soft riser pad underneath there, and these are again ABEC 11 retro zigzags, 70 millimeter and 78A because when I rode this with the, the 86A, they, it tended to be too fast and too lively. This wood, because it doesn't have fiberglass on it, it just wanted, and maybe because it's heavier, was too fast. So I needed to slow it down a little bit and get in control, and that meant putting a softer urethane on there, which is the 78A and a 70 millimeter which is bigger than what's on my, my 30 inch board and that really made this come out nicely it's very rigid uh, it has a little bit of concave in it it has a nice kick tail it has a little bit of kick at the front so it's kind of in between old school new school so my guess is that if you put a harder diameter wheel on this you could probably use this as a slide board because your feet are going to lock in and you could do some of that stuff but I like it as a utilitarian all-purpose board where I can cruise around, I can carve, and I can just have fun on it. But this is very stable because it's uh, stiff and has you nice concave to hold your feet in. So that turned out really nice. I haven't ridden this very much, but I would consider that to be one of my main skates. I'm going to try to speed this up, right, because I think the camera's running out. Um, I got two kickers that I want to show you at the end. This would be, this took me a long time to figure out. This is a, a 44 inch GNS. Um, I don't know what they call it, but I, I like it because, again, it's um, fiberglass and wood laminate. And as you can see, because of my Bull Rider reissue, I'm very comfortable with that. And that's what made, excuse me, the, the Fiberflex the model that it was, was the tactile characteristics of that sandwich of fiberglass and maple. Flex just the right amount, but with the right amount of strength and the right amount of pop and the right amount of cushion underneath your feet, it really was the perfect formula that Gordon and Smith came up with coming out of their surfboard designs and that was even some of the other fiberglass maple boards like the MPI, MPI Jimbo Phillips when you try some of those, they kind of creak and they don't have quite the response as the fiber flex really is a Cadillac. So this is a 44 inch version, long board, kick tail. Uh, it does have a little bit of concave in it. I wanted a 44 inch kind of mainstream long board. Uh, decided to try Parrish trucks. Um, turns out the 150 millimeter axle for this width board is better than 180 like the Randalls are. They usually come in 150, 180. 150 was the proper uh, axle length, and I had to try different ones. And these are 70 miller, uh, millimeter again, ABEC 11 retro zigzags, and these would be in 83A, which is lemon, which is what I started on, which is a great wheel in 66 millimeter or 70. You go to the orange, it, it hardens it up to a three durometer, uh, but this is just a great all-around functioning wheel. I have bones, reds, bearings in there. But that is a really nice 44-inch long board. Haven't had a whole lot of chance to ride that because the weather's been too hot. But I would say that would be one of the main uh, sticks in my arsenal that I would consider a board that I'm going to ride. Now, here are the two cherries that you've been waiting for. Well, there'll be three. This 
is a Bane, right, from the Bane Del Mar championships back in the 1970s. Bane was one of the larger skateboard manufacturers in the early seminal days of the sport. I wanted to show you this because this was the original setup that many, many kids in the late 70s rode on. It was one of the first ones. This is the original Cadillac wheel uh, made by Frank Naysworthy. I had two sets of these. The problem is, over the years, they dry rot. So I've been very lucky to, to keep these. Um, this is an original set of Chicago trucks. I used the three-hole pattern to mount this because I think well, the Bane had been mounted with a, with an Excalibur with four bolt hole patterns, but I wanted to set this up original, so this is a, an original Bane. Chicago Trucks, the original Cadillac wheel by Frank Naysworthy. I have, um, I had another set of these, and what happened is, is that they, uh, they dry rot. So, who would ever know that the original Cadillacs had a core like this? So that's what's left after my other set of original Cadillac wheels. It's got your bearing cups set in this core, which is, I think, probably the reason why they did it. And I don't think that this core is made out of urethane. It may be made out of, I don't know what. It has a rim, uh, a mold, uh, but normally there would be urethane on the outside of that, and that's the way that is on this original Cadillac wheel here. They had cores, open bearings, um, so I, I saved the cores. Um, but it's very interesting to see the shape of the original Cadillac. Obviously, they went to many different models, too, Frank, uh, in trying to keep up with uh, what later became sealed bearings, which probably put the Cadillac wheel out of business. Uh, but this was um, a really large wheel back in the late 1970s, and that was a big selling factor for the kids, was it was a smoother ride, and it was a more cushioned ride because of those big wheels. So I know when I got my first Proline that had uh, Cadillac had Chicago trucks and it had Cadillac wheels. Uh, they were a similar size to this. I don't think they were exactly the same, and I'm not sure that they had these cores, but I know that that, that was the cherry that the kids look forward to getting in their Easter basket. Okay, the two cherries that are going to be the kickers today are, and these I would consider to be uh, members of my quiver, this is a Z-Flex reissue Jimmy Plummer fiberglass. This is a gem. I don't know if you guys know about this board. This is molded fiberglass, exactly the way that Skip Ingblom made the original Zephyr boards back in the day. Uh, I think he had a mold. They would pour the fiberglass in, let it set. This has got rails. It's got a beam. This is the way the original Zephyr board was set up. This is a reissue. It's in the shape of Jimmy Plummer's board. And I got it set up very well. This is a Tracker RTX 116 millimeter truck on the front, which is a loose turning, not the, the gnarly pivot slalom truck. It's more loose like an Indy. And I got Bones bushings in here, which are very quick rebound. Again, uh, 83A retro zigzags, 66 millimeter, which is the standard wheel. And in the back, I was able to, on one, reissue by Tracker, uh, get a split axle slalom truck on the back. So this is split axle that puts your wheels out over the, the kingpin to make the wheels stick a lot better than um, whenever the hanger is out behind the kingpin. This is about a $100, uh, $100 truck and you can see how they had to manufacture that.